geothermal is a resource that can be tapped in a numerous different countries, numerous different geologies. There's different development solutions for the for depending on where you are in the world. So it's not just for the countries with the volcanoes. I'm here in Newcastle, in the heart of what used to be coal mining country. This whole area powered the British Industrial Revolution with fossil fuels. So what are we doing here? Well, down beneath my feet, where the coal workings are, but also far below that, there is another energy resource, a renewable one. And it turns out that those old coal workings might just be the gateway to accessing it. I'm talking about geothermal energy, because that perhaps could provide quite a chunky part of a more sustainable energy future for the UK. And we don't hear very much about geothermal, so we thought it was time to take a look at it. We know you love the Fully Charged Show, so why not come along to our global live shows in 2023 and 2024? The next shows are in the UK, specifically Farnborough and Harrogate. So get your tickets today. Geothermal energy sounds like quite an exotic concept to those of us in the UK. It's something we associate with New Zealand or Italy or Iceland, places where there are active volcanoes and pools of bubbling mud and geysers, basically something you need really enthusiastic geology for. But this is Britain and that's just not really us. Now, if that was the end of the story, this would be a very short episode, but it isn't. The British Geological Survey has found that if we wanted to, we could supply 100% of our heat and a decent chunk of our electricity, 85% for Scotland and 9% for England, from geothermal. Here in Newcastle, they're starting to take that very seriously indeed. But before we get to what they're doing, let's just have a quick run through of what geothermal energy really is. If you dig downward anywhere on Earth, you'll find that it gets hotter as you go down. So beneath me right now, if you go down one kilometre, you'll find it's about 40 degrees C. If you go down three kilometres, you get to 90 degrees C. And if you go down to five kilometres, it's 140 degrees C. There is lots of heat down there. And geothermal energy is just using that heat, bringing it up to the surface and giving it something useful to do. So the Earth is just a big heat battery and this, the core of it is at about 6,000 degrees centigrade. And then the question is, well, what is all that heat doing there? Well, incredibly, about 20% of the heat is left over from the formation of the planet, from when Earth was a molten ball of rock four and a half billion years ago. And it turns out it just takes the planet a very long time to cool down. But the other 80% comes from very slow radioactive decay of things like uranium and thorium and potassium that heat up the rock as they decay. So there is lots of energy down there. And then you get to whether you can get at it to use it. And the thing you need to know here is called the geothermal gradient. What that means is it's the amount it gets hotter for every kilometre you go downwards. And in the UK, it's around 25 to 30 degrees centigrade. So is that enough? Can you get usable energy out of that? Well, it depends on what you want to do with the energy. Traditional geothermal energy generation is about generating electricity. So you need to bring water up at about 160 degrees C in order to run a steam turbine and generate your electricity. That is a huge temperature and there's only a couple of places in the UK where anyone is even talking about that. Robert actually visited one of them a couple of years ago. It's at the Eden Project in Cornwall. But for most of the UK, it's just not feasible to dig holes deep enough to get water at that temperature out. The thing is that if you go down one to two kilometres, there's still useful energy there. It's just that the water you pump out is warm instead of hot. And that's useful because a huge chunk of our energy demand in the UK is for heating. So instead of turning that energy into electricity, we can just use the heat, move it around to where we need it. And that is known as shallow geothermal, and that is where most of the UK's geothermal potential lies. There's two different types of projects that are located in this northeast region. There's coal mine geothermal projects, which are mostly located on the south side of the Tyne right now in Gateshead. Uh, and that, they're there because of the legacy of coal mining and the former coal mines that exist beneath the area. And then on this side of the river, we have one of the UK's deepest boreholes in a city centre. Our borehole here goes down to two kilometres beneath the surface. 
And just tell me about that borehole. Is it, is it just there for research purposes or is it being used to, to take hot water from underneath? So at the moment, it's effectively a research facility. It's like a giant lap right. under the ground. Uh, and it was drilled back in 2011 to investigate aspects of the potential for geothermal, deep geothermal heat beneath the Newcastle area. So this is it. Down beneath my feet, like right down here, I'm standing on top of it and it's slightly wobbly. Um, there is a two kilometre deep hole. This is the research borehole that's going all the way into the geology underneath. And it's just like here in the middle of all of this, right? You would never know this was there, which is actually the best thing about it. <laughs> And how, you know, I know so they're doing some monitoring in the, the coal mines near here. Why, why do you need to do monitoring in association with geothermal projects? What is it you need to keep an eye on? So there's a, a few different reasons you need to monitor the projects. The first is that there are some uh, environmental requirements that you need to monitor what's going on at any given location. Uh, the second thing is that you want to be able to understand how the warm water you're producing to feed into your heat schemes varies over time. You want it to be predictable. So by monitoring temperature and flow, we're able to say something about how predictable that energy source will be over time. So let's talk about the sort of broader picture then. So in terms of geothermal for the UK, like what, what is the potential? We're not a hot country. We don't have any volcanoes. What, what's, the, what's the real potential for geothermal here? So you're absolutely right, we don't have volcanoes, we're not a very hot place compared to Iceland or New Zealand. But what we do have, and what we find across the country, is that when we go deeper, it gets warmer. Uh, and we have the potential to use a lot of the heat beneath the ground for space heating. So not for electricity generation, that's probably a smaller opportunity, but for space heating, the opportunity is huge. This certainly isn't a new idea. The Roman baths at Bath were using hot spring water 2,000 years ago, and there have been hot mineral springs in places like Derbyshire and Bristol for centuries. And even the ground source heat pumps that we're used to talking about here on Fully Charged, they're using geothermal energy, but they're near the surface in the top few metres that's mostly coming from solar heating rather than from underneath. What we're talking about here is on a much bigger scale. If you go down a kilometre and you get water at 40 degrees, when you put that into a heat pump, it gives you an enormous head start. So you're working much more efficiently. So where in the UK is any of this even possible? Well, there are two types of geology that are really useful for this. One is granite intrusions, so like the ones you get in Cornwall or in Scotland. And the other are sedimentary basins, like the one underneath me here in Newcastle or in Cheshire. So then all you need is a very deep hole. Digging deep holes is expensive, but perhaps sometimes there are already some holes there. Say, for example, you spent the past 200 years digging out the innards of your county to extract fossil fuels. Then you've got a head start. So maybe the dirty energy infrastructure of the past can become the clean energy infrastructure of the future. And tell me about the, uh, the thing with coal mines, because, you know, uh, as, as you've described, you know, there's lots of coal mines around. So there's already some holes in the ground. So how does having some coal mines around, how does that affect what you can do with geothermal? How can you use that? So lots of our coal mining areas have obviously over the last hundred years been areas where communities have built up. So one of the first things that's really important is there's already that co-location of people, the demand and the heat resource below. Uh, we're already also in many cases having to pump that water out from those coal mines to stop them from flooding. So there's two things that are already going on which means then the next step to think about how we utilize that water that we're already pumping out the ground for heating is a really simple but very clever next step. And how much of an advantage is it if you start with a coal mine? I mean, is it that it's there so you might as well use it? Or is it actually, you know, someone's done a lot of the digging for you and they've saved you some effort? Yeah, so uh, you've got, um, if you think about water moving through a rock, actually in a coal seam, it's almost like a tunnel, right? It's like a big pipe. So it moves very easily uh, and it moves very pr quite predictably. So that's a good start. The other um, piece that's important to say is that 
although we still need to warm that water up a bit further, but for every kilowatt it takes to warm it up, we get three kilowatts of heat back. So it's very efficient. This is a site of the Gateshead Living Lab on the site of an old colliery. And what they're doing here is digging a hole. It's currently about 100 metres deep. It's going to go down to 150 metres right into the old coal mine workings. And the reason it's there is that we are sitting here in between two geothermal energy schemes. The Gateshead District Energy and Lanchester Wines, both of whom are taking geothermal energy in different places. And what they're going to be doing with this hole is monitoring what's happening in the old mine workings as those two schemes operate. So the water flow, the water quality, the water temperature, they're going to be keeping an eye on it to see how those schemes interact. And fundamentally, that is all about scaling this idea up. So this might look like quite a small little bit of Gateshead here behind me, but this is the gateway to the world beneath. And one of the things that, I mean, it's sort of been, the, been in the news recently because of fracking and things, but you know, people now think about deep boreholes and they think, well, what about what is called induced seismicity? So that's like little earthquakes that didn't happen before and, and sometimes happen when you dig a very deep hole. Is that a risk with geothermal? So there's been lots of research across induced seismicity and, and you're absolutely right to point out that it's the injection of water or fluids back into the rocks beneath the ground that causes those small earthquakes or, or that induced seismicity. We know from research across oil and gas and other geothermal that the volume of injected water is one of the key drivers of whether we're likely to see induced seismicity that people would feel. Uh, and in geothermal, the volumes of injected water are far lower than in the oil and gas, the fracking projects that people will have heard of. So it's not to say that it isn't possible that there could be induced seismicity from geothermal, but because the volumes of injected water are much lower, the likelihood of that being felt is much smaller. And how much of a difference, you know, when it comes to, so low carbon sources are all all the fashion, but how much of a difference could all of this, could geothermal energy make to the UK's carbon, you know, efforts towards decarbonisation? I think it could make a, a, a huge difference. Um, right now, deep geothermal, in fact, geothermal, even coal mine geothermal, isn't completely zero carbon. There's still aspects that require us to to generate CO2. For instance, the drilling rigs use diesel right now, so they still emit CO2. We use steel in the construction, that's still got embedded carbon. But in some studies, roughly, it's maybe 7% of the carbon emissions compared to gas, natural gas, so a, a huge step. It could reduce the UK's carbon emissions by thousands of thousands of tons, not just for the Icelands and for the New Zealands of the world. The thing that strikes me about geothermal energy is that it is always there, it's always down there. Every local area has a supply and everyone can kind of take that for themselves and it is a renewable resource, so why aren't we all using it more? It's really great to see what's already happening here and just think about how much further this could go. And maybe we should all be thinking more about the energy that is right beneath our feet.